Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about hyperthyroidism, which is defined as elevated thyroid hormone levels in circulation. Thyroid hormones are very important in fetal development and also in metabolism. So high levels of thyroid hormones in circulation, as you can imagine, will amp up metabolism to a point where it becomes pathological. Hyperthyroidism and thyrotoxicosis actually mean kind of the same thing. However, some define hyperthyroidism specifically to be increased synthesis of thyroid hormones in the thyroid gland, whereas thyrotoxicosis refers to a clinical syndrome of excess circulating thyroid hormones, irrespective of the source. In this video, hyperthyroidism will mean high levels of thyroid hormones in circulation, causing the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Understanding the physiology of the thyroid gland the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis is important to understanding hyperthyroidism. Thyrotropin-releasing hormone, TRH, stimulates the synthesis and secretion of thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, which acts at the thyroid to stimulate all steps of thyroid hormone biosynthesis and secretion by binding onto thyroid-stimulating hormone receptors. The thyroid hormones are triadothyronin T3 and thyroxin T4. These thyroid hormones control the secretion of TRH and TSH by negative feedback to maintain the physiological levels of the main hormones of the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. In hyperthyroidism, there's elevated circulating thyroid hormones, which means there will be a negative feedback loop causing a decrease in TRH and TSH. The functional units of the thyroid glands are the follicles made up of follicular cells. The center of the follicle is the colloid. The thyroid gland has a rich blood supply and here are the capillaries which will bring TSH, thyroid stimulating hormones, to these cells. Next to the follicles are the parafollicular cells, also known as C cells, which produce calcitonin, another hormone which we'll not talk about, but has an important role in calcium homeostasis. Zooming closer now at the interaction between the capillary and the follicle, the capillaries, of course, brings thyroid-stimulating hormone to the area. The inner part of the follicle is a colloid, the center. On the follicular cells, you have thyroid-stimulating hormone receptors. When thyroid-stimulating hormone reaches the thyroid follicular cells, it binds to thyroid-stimulating hormone receptors, causing a number of things. Firstly, it will stimulate thyroglobulin production. Thyroglobulin will enter the colloid. Thyroglobulin contains tyrosine groups, which are important in making the thyroid hormones. TSH also stimulates the expression of channels, such as sodium iodide channels, allowing circulating iodide to enter the follicular cells. From here, iodide enters the colloid via another channel and becomes oxidized to iodine. Iodine and thyroglobulin is what makes our thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. T3 and T4 will enter circulation, the thyroid hormones travel in circulation bound to proteins, the main protein being thyroxin binding protein. And here it will target the different cells around our body to elicit an effect, so increasing metabolism. In this video, hyperthyroidism will mean high levels of thyroid hormones in circulation, causing the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Causes of hyperthyroidism can be divided into two groups. One group is where you have increased synthesis of thyroid hormones of whatever cause. This group is called hyperthyroidism with normal or high radioiodine uptake. Increased iodine uptake makes sense because increased thyroid hormone synthesis requires an increase in iodine. The other group is hyperthyroidism with near absent radioiodine uptake. This means that hyperthyroidism is not a result of increased synthesis of thyroid hormones. Can you think of any? 
If not, just wait and we'll find out together. Let us first focus on hyperthyroidism, where there is an increase in thyroid hormone synthesis production. The autoimmune disorder Graves' disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism. The disease is much more common in women than in men and begins between ages 20 and 40 years. In Graves' disease, there is a presence of autoantibodies against thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor. These antibodies stimulate and activate the thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor. Activated thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor, as we have learned, means increase in thyroglobulin and iodine in the colloid, which means more T3 and T4 can be produced. More T3 and T4 then enter circulation bound to proteins, resulting in hyperthyroidism. Another cause of hyperthyroidism is toxic adenoma, or toxic multinodular goiter. In this case, the nodules can be initially uh, not toxic, but through time they can undergo genetic mutations, causing an abnormal thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor. The mutated thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor becomes autonomous. It can activate by itself in the, in the presence or in the absence of TSH. This means more thyroglobulin, more iodine in the colloid. This means more T3 and T4 can be produced. More T3 and T4 enter circulation, resulting in hyperthyroidism. Another example, although very rare, is iodine excess. We know that the normal process of TSH will stimulate the TSH receptor, and we know that iodine is very important in the production of thyroid hormones. If we have a lot of iodine, this will of course shift production to the right more, so we produce more thyroid hormones. With more thyroid hormones means that we have hyperthyroidism. A very interesting cause of hyperthyroidism is during early stages of pregnancy, gestation, when beta-HCG, the pregnancy hormone, uh, is produced by the fertilized egg. At very high levels, human chorionic gonadotropin, the beta-HCG or HCG, not only interacts with its uh, cognate receptors, the luteinizing hormone receptors, but it also cross-reacts with thyroid-stimulating hormone receptors. This results in a physiological increase in thyroid hormone synthesis and a decrease in thyroid-stimulating hormone levels. In some women, this mechanism can actually lead to overt hyperthyroidism during pregnancy. Autonomous secretion of thyroid-stimulating hormone by a pituitary adenoma is a rare cause of hyperthyroidism. Pituitary adenoma can be malignant or non-malignant. Regardless, it, it causes an increase in thyroid-stimulating hormone production. With more thyroid-stimulating hormone in circulation, this means the thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor is stimulated. Activated thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor increases thyroglobulin and iodine in the colloid, which means more T3 and T4, more T3 and T4 that enter circulation bound to protein, resulting in hyperthyroidism. The causes of hyperthyroidism we have discussed so far are all examples of an increase in thyroid hormone synthesis. This is why these examples are categorized as hyperthyroidism with normal or high radioiodine uptake because increase in thyroid hormone synthesis means more iodine needs to be taken up. The other cause of hyperthyroidism is where there is near absent iodine uptake, which means there is no actual increase in thyroid hormone synthesis in the thyroid gland. A good example of this is ingestion of thyroid hormones, either factitious ingestion of thyroid hormones or overdosing accidentally with levothyroxine. When you ingest thyroid hormones, they are absorbed easily in the gut and can enter circulation easily, causing hyperthyroidism. This still has that negative feedback to the brain to reduce thyrotropin-releasing hormone and thyroid-stimulating hormone levels. An interesting cause of hyperthyroidism here in this group is called hamburger thyrotoxicosis. Probably not common now, 
But back in the day when beef was being made, some of the burgers contained uh, the cow's thyroid glands. Because you're eating thyroid glands, you probably are consuming all that stored thyroid hormone, which will increase the thyroid hormone levels in the blood, causing hyperthyroidism. Ectopic production of thyroid hormones from thyroid cancer um, metastasis to other organs, for example, thyroid cancer metastasis to the bones nearby, is another cause. This metastatic thyroid cancer can begin to produce thyroid hormones, increasing thyroid hormone levels. Not sure why this is placed under the hyperthyroidism with near-absent radio iodine uptake, because technically there is an increase in thyroid hormone synthesis. Anyway, the final cause of hyperthyroidism with near-absent radio iodine uptake is thyroiditis, which is inflammation of the thyroid gland. When you have inflammation of the thyroid gland, you can imagine the follicular cells are destroyed, releasing all its content into the bloodstream resulting in hyperthyroidism. There are many causes of hyperthyroidism, radiation, medication, lithium, and infection, and even autoimmune. All these different types of thyroiditis have their own unique names, which we will not go into. So those are the causes of hyperthyroidism. To summarize, hyperthyroidism is where you have excess amounts of T3 and T4 in circulation. Hyperthyroidism can be divided into hyperthyroidism with normal to high radio iodine uptake, which means basically increase in thyroid synthesis in the thyroid gland, or hyperthyroidism with near absent radio iodine uptake, which basically means there's no synthesis of thyroid hormones from the thyroid gland.